Hi there, Will here, and today we're going to answer a big question, or at least uh, offer our opinion on a big question, because uh, thanks to my mate David, I have a Leica M6 in hand, and I've got my Contax G2, and these are, of course, some of the most uh, clout-inspiring 35mm cameras available in the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to go take a bunch of photos with them, and I'll let you know what I think of them. This is uh, the first time that I'm going to be loading one of these. David did show me how to do it, but uh, if it is jarring for those among you who know how to do it very well, then I apologize in advance. Hopefully that is the correct technique. Uh, that goes like that. In, over, round, twist, okay. Ta-da, we're loaded, thank goodness. And now the equivalent process with the G2. I have slightly more experience with this one. I say slightly, probably a few hundred rolls more experience, but even if you don't have experience, it's still a, an easier process. What, like, what? You put your thumb in the middle? Yeah. You twist it? Oh, okay. 800 ISO, I should probably put this on 800 ISO as well. Correct. Oh, right, by the way, the reason we're using 800 ISO is because uh, I feel like it's the film equivalent of the Leica, so. <laughs> We'll have to give everything its best chance and see how it goes. I see a wave. Okay, there's one wave. And then we need a like a wave. That'll do. Wow. <laughs> it's got a nice uh, sound to the shutter, to be honest. <laughs> also, we're using pretty much the exact same lens equivalent on the Leica and the G2. In fact, before anyone even says anything, I'll take the filter off of this so that there's absolutely nothing impeding its optics, but like this is an f2 lens, this is an f2 lens, this is a 45mm, this is 40 They're both meant to be out of this world of glass, so uh, we'll have a fun time comparing that as well, I guess. Also, this is obviously not going to be like a scientific comparison. I'm just pretty much going to shoot two rolls of film on these and tell you about the experience. There's a lot of like salt spray going on here, so we're having to do this one by one, but I think we might get uh, an actual cool picture here. The swell is like super hectic today because we've been having heavy, heavy storms and rain, but uh, it might make for a good photograph or two for us Leica boys. I think that was good. Can it not go faster than a thousand F16 with like auto, or is a thousand the fastest? A thousand is the fastest, okay. Infinity, F16, 1000. That's not fair, actually. The Leica's gonna be a better photo because it had a better wave. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I'm just gonna wait, but if it does that again, that would be sick. One more time, please. Ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going wild over here. That was sick, though. I'm not sure I actually got the right photo, but there'll be something. This piece is like a statement on like man versus nature, you know, because it's like man stuff falling apart, but the rock behind it is like, you know, like still, this is not in focus, there you go, still intact. Pretty deep. To give you some technical specifications for them, so we can have a bit of a better idea of what we're working with here, the Leica M6 weighs 700 grams and the Contax G2 weighs 695 grams. They both have a variety of lenses for the system. The Leica M lenses range from 18mm to 130 I think, and the Contax G lenses range from 16 to 90 There are more Leica M lenses, 
but you're far more likely to end up owning the entire set of uh, Contax G lenses because you could have two Leica M lenses for the price of the entire set of the Contax G lens, if you get a good deal. To touch on price, briefly, because that's not actually what we're talking about here, but it's worth mentioning. On average, the M6 is gonna cost you about double, at least a third more than a nice G2 system. Unless we're talking a black paint G2, which does go for pretty comparable prices to the Leica, depending on what uh, sort of setup you're looking at. But that doesn't offer you anything besides uh, the G2 being black paint. So the way that they end up performing in this video is probably going to be the determining factor there. I'm gonna compare the images at the end of the video after I'm done taking you through the journey with me. But uh, for the last little bit of uh, physical comparison, we'll talk about some of the functionality. The G2 is catered towards being more of an automatic experience and the M6 is of course a lot more manual with manual focus, manual film advance, etc. Whether you prefer automatic or manual is likely uh, up to you. I know people have mentioned in the past that the G2 is an easier camera to use and you can make pictures better with it because it's fully automatic and you don't have to think about things like focusing and such but to be honest my understanding of people who own Leicas and use them professionally I'm not that person but what I've come to realize is that when you've used this camera for long enough, you sort of become one with it, if that doesn't sound too cheesy. So you're able to zone focus and you become the automatic setting basically, uh, as opposed to the G2 doing it for you. And I'm pretty sure a capable Leica user can do everything in very comparable speeds to the G2's automatic. So I don't necessarily think that they are, um, that one beats the other out there outside of the fact that you can pick the G2 up and it'll instantly function as the high-end camera you expect it to be, whereas the M6, you'd probably have to come to terms with it a bit, you know? In terms of actual features that the cameras have outside of your ability to use them, the Contax G2 has automatic parallax correction, which is something that the M6 is missing, which is very useful and probably one of the bigger downsides of the M6. They do, I think, correct for parallax. I think I might be speaking out of turn here a little bit, but the G2 is very accurate with its parallax correction. Like the, the finder zooms in and shows you exactly what your frame is going to be. I've also read, not that I found this to be the case in practice because they did mirror each other pretty similarly, but maybe that was just a coincidence, that the G2 has a better meter, mainly because it's less center weighted, whereas the Leica supposedly has a more center weighted meter. The Leica is quieter because it doesn't have all the uh, automatic sounds and electronic shutter things going on, which of course is one of its legendary features. But the Contax G2 has a faster shutter speed. You'll have noticed that I asked David if this thing, if the M6 could go faster than a thousandth of a second because I'd taken the picture initially on the G2 and was missing the speed that I'd achieved on the G2 on the M6. I think this manually, you can set it to go to 4,000. I think it might go up to either 6,000 or 8,000 automatically with the electronic shutter. So you get a lot more leeway in terms of lower aperture and bright light without an ND filter. And the last thing that the M6 definitely wins out on is uh, its viewfinder. You'll see later in the video, I uh, mention how spectacular it is <laughs> to be looking through this viewfinder because it's like huge and super bright. And the G2 viewfinder is uh, pitiful in comparison, to be honest, like a dim, tiny little screen. And I suppose it makes sense because you're not meant to be manually focusing, but uh, it's worth mentioning that this is much nicer to look out of than the G2 one, in spite of its uh, automatic parallax adjustment. Anyway, I'll make a few more photos and then uh, you can join me back here and we'll reflect on the results. F16. I'm gonna wait for a wave and then turn around. I suppose that'll do. That'll do too. I'll tell you one thing, the G2 and M6 light meters really like uh, collaborating because everything that the G2 tells me, the M6 agrees with. So. This might actually uh, end up being the first good photograph of our excursion because things are actually kicking off here. And I'm gonna try to be patient, because I can, because there's much less uh, sea spray spraying all over our incredibly expensive cameras. <laughs> Thank you.
The viewfinder on this thing is like delicious. It's like a whole new world. All right. Next scene. Actually, that's kind of fucking hard to zoom. This is disgusting. Okay, G2 is done on 37. Leica is done on 37. Reverse, flip, reverse, flip. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is an experience. That ended up being a lot more hardcore of a mission than uh, we were anticipating. The, the swell was pretty crazy and I got uh, nailed by some of the seafoam, as you can uh, potentially see. But hopefully it was worth the picture. I don't think David got it on uh, video, but we do have a still that will come. <laughs> and I'll show you how I looked. There was quite a scene. The crowd gave a cheer and the cars that were driving by hooted because I got quite properly nailed by the seafoam. Anyway, uh, let's refer to Will at Home in terms of uh, the final comparison of these two. Hopefully you enjoyed that selection of pictures. Don't worry, the G2 did not receive any damage from the, the tiny bit of foam it got on it. It was cleaned off instantly. And then uh, once we got back, every camera that was out in that salt spray got a very thorough cleaning between David and I. And now, uh, I suppose it's time for the portion of this that I've been dreading, which is the comparison. <laughs> I hope I've mentioned frequently enough throughout the course of this video that this is, of course, a very uh, opinion subjective thing and uh, that I'm not trying to give a definitive answer here. This whole video has just been about the shooting and comparing and offering an opinion. My opinion is likely to differ from a bunch of people's opinions, but uh, that's the beauty of them, I suppose. To be dead honest with you, I uh, find it very tricky to actually pick which one of these I prefer. And that's coming from a perspective of having used this G2 for at least five years now, I think. I've literally never used a Leica camera before. I've never put a roll of film through a Leica. I think I took one picture on one of David's other Leicas once, and it was out of focus. But uh, now, having experienced it, I can say I understand what uh, the hype is about. You can really feel, even in comparison to my G2, which uh, I've mentioned is my favorite camera in hand, what people are talking about when they talk about the experience of holding and using a Leica. And whilst I'm sure the way I went about it is still very clunky in comparison to the way people who own and use these professionally do, I understand. I understand the appeal and I understand uh, just how good one can probably get at using this thing if you've got a lot of practice with it, which Brings me to my next point, which is that I feel like this camera is excellent for someone who's willing to dedicate the time to using it frequently and become, as I mentioned earlier, one with it. Because 
I can feel, having only used it once now, that this, as a result of being a pedigreed camera system, is ready for you to learn how to use it properly. Like the, the zone focusing story and everything else about it, you could end up being as fast in use with this, I'm pretty sure, as the G2. Maybe you might lose out in terms of the auto loading thing because, I don't know, Gary Winogrand isn't here to offer an opinion on how fast he can load a Leica, but I think you might still lose out a bit just because of the nature of how many things need to happen in order to load it, even if you're very proficient. But the rest of it, focusing the speed of taking an image and moving on to the next one, very comparable. Like in terms of shutter speed as well, like this has a continuous shutter, which uh, would probably be well suited to sports photography. But in terms of like the street, if you're out there, I'm assuming you're shooting 35 millimeter film and you don't want to burn through it. I think it would take no time at all to end up shooting through an entire roll at that shutter speed. And it's not necessarily the style, I assume, as I'm not a street photographer, that most people use in street photography, just holding down the shutter button and letting it be continuous. And my experience in street photography has been more like, you get ready, you wait for the picture to come into fruition, you take it, and then if you want to follow up, I mean, it takes a split second to advance this lever anyway. So in terms of actual real world function, they're indistinguishable, I'd assume, once you become proficient to a certain level. And the final thing that I reckon is probably worth investigating are the lenses. Now, I'm gonna accept full responsibility for this. When I focused this uh, Leica lens to infinity throughout the video, I didn't do the whole go to infinity and then a little bit back so that it doesn't end up focusing or impeding on the focus through the, the lens glass itself. So there are a few pictures where it's focused to infinity, but it seems to have like back focused slightly, which is user error. In terms of the pictures where I managed to focus it uh, accurately by zone or with the, the range finder compared to the G series ones. I mean, you can be the judge, but I find them very, very hard to distinguish in terms of raw sharpness. This is an Imacon scan of the G2 and an Imacon scan of the M6. The only way that I really managed to distinguish them was by looking at the focal length because the 40 is of course slightly wider than the 45 mil, but in terms of raw optical clarity, they're both there, like they're both pretty much unparalleled. I mean, this isn't the sharpest, I think, Cinecron lens either. It's not like the most legendary. It is quite a rare one, if you didn't know. Also, David tells me, I wouldn't know. But uh, you're not gonna be able to distinguish between the Leica lens and the G-series lens. In fact, uh, I prefer the G rendering of the G-series lens just because it's got a bit more warmth to it, which also could have to do with the scanning or the exposure or whatever and slightly more micro contrast, which is one of the traits that I have mentioned in uh, videos on the G series before. But basically, at the end of the day, aside from the price, I think if you owned either or of these, the images that you'd make would be stellar. Whether you're willing to pay substantially more, in most cases, for the Leica, because a cheap Leica is still gonna be double the price of a cheap G2, is up to you. Personally, after using this now, and having a very good understanding of the uh, sensitivity of the G-Series systems. If I were able to go and buy a Leica and a Leica lens, I would because they're infinitely serviceable in theory and uh, mechanical, which is a beautiful thing. You would miss out on the faster shutter speeds and such, but to be honest, I'm getting to a point now where I've owned this G2 for so long that uh, I'm strongly considering getting rid of it. Not to buy a Leica even, just because I feel like I'm prolonging the inevitable by having owned this for like five years now. Just, it, 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 it. I don't think the G-Series cameras are cameras that want to be owned for a particularly long period of time by anyone. I think if it moves on to a new owner, it'll gain a new life and be willing to continue for a long period yet. But I feel like it's, uh, it's just biding its time at the moment. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that comparison and that uh, I've said some things that were useful. I mean, if you were in the market to buy either of these, who knows? Maybe you end up going for the Leica, maybe you go for the G2. Which do I personally prefer? The G2, technically, still from a user perspective. But as I said, if I used one of these for a long time, I can definitely see myself enjoying it equally to this. And also very much enjoying the fact that it's much less likely to just explode on me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much to David, of course, for lending me this uh, wonderful M6 with a black dot as well, which is apparently something rare. I mean, just in case you hadn't realized by now, I'm not familiar with the Leica system. <laughs> uh, 
And thank you very much to the members of my Buy Me A Coffee, as always, who support this channel and make it so that uh, there are no adverts ever. My print store has been updated, so if you want to buy a lovely Lesotho print or some prints from other adventures I've been on as of late, feel free to go check it out. And uh, besides that, I'll see you very soon.